So this is the public health and healthcare portion. And so we're gonna have Tina speak first. Tina is the Banner Health Emergency Preparedness Program Manager. She's responsible for emergency preparedness programs at Banner Boswell, Banner Del Webb, and Banner Thunderbird Medical Centers. She's a nationally and internationally recognized certified emergency manager, a FEMA master exercise practitioner, and that means disaster preparedness exercise. Do you do other exercise? No. Okay. <laughs> and a certified healthcare emergency professional. Tina has been working for Banner Health for 20 years and has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Homeland Security and Emergency Management. And then Kelsey will be speaking right after her. Kelsey Andrews is an operations supervisor at Maricopa County Department of Public Health, Office of Preparedness and Response. Prior to the role that she has now, she was a, a 911 dispatcher for seven years. I bet you could write a book about that. Acquiring invaluable skills in crisis management and emergency communication. As operations supervisor, her current role, she oversees vaccine event management program and various operational plans providing crucial support to responses when needed. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology from Purdue University and a Master's in Science for Criminal Justice and Public Safety from Indiana University. She brings a comprehensive understanding of societal dynamics and public safety principles in her work. So let's start with Tina and then we'll turn it over to Kelsey. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Good. Um, so what do you think? Because I think when we first started, I don't know how many of you have been here the whole time. Uh, Jennifer had said, this is not what you do. This is you're going to take a deep dive into the world of emergency management. What do you think? Are you, are you ready to go now? We, have, we got preppers going on. Excellent. Again, my name's Tina. I've had the pleasure of working with Banner Health for 20 years. Um, they're a phenomenal corporation. And I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Boswell and Webb here in the community. So I have their, the lovely photos up here, Boswell on my left, I guess it would be over there, and then um, Thunderbird on the, excuse me, uh, Webb on the right. And I also work at Thunderbird, and I do emergency preparedness. What does that really mean? I have the task of training our staff, who again, they are not emergency managers. They are clinical staff, they're ancillary support teams, they could be facilities, they could be housekeeping, they could be nurses in the ICU. Emergency management is not what they do every day. Again, I like to say it's what I do every day. So my job in Banner, in my hospitals, is to train them and, and make them feel comfortable. If something happens, which, what do you all think, this is an interactive session here, what would you think would typically happen in our hospitals that would rise to the occasion of, we have an incident management team that would be deployed to respond. What can you think of based on these other speeches we've had that could happen in the hospital world? You may have been in there and something happened. Well, unfortunately, active shooter is, or an active threat even, is taken quite seriously. And what I will say with that is what we do is we practice. We practice the unspeak, we don't practice that, but our response to it, it would be very chaotic, very quick. And it, it's important that people know, and I will just say here, since I've done a lot of these, um, practice the principles of run, hide, fight. Run if your life is in danger, if you can get out. This is what we do in the hospital world too. Know your escape routes, even in, in the churches here. You know, what goes to the outside? Where can you go quickly? If you can't run, if the shooter is in your way, then hide somewhere, preferably in a room where you can either lock the door, turn the lights off, pull the blinds down, silence your phone, or barricade that door until you know that law enforcement is here. And then lastly, it would be fight, and I didn't realize I'd be doing this today. Um, you'd be fighting, if your life is in imminent danger, if there's the shooter, there's you, you're gonna do what you can to protect your life. So take an object, I mean, you could use, I don't know where that little portable microphone is, throw a microphone, a fire extinguisher. You know, in the hospital world, we have IV poles, it could be a telephone, anything like that. So that's definitely something that we do practice and train to. And we're, we have great partners with our law enforcement teams here in the community. So um, we do this quite a bit. And actually, we just did one for Basel and Webb, I want to say it was two months ago. So we did do that. But other things, can you think of anything else? Wow. You guys are all over it. <laughs> um, it's very close. Our hospital, Webb and Basel, both 
are on the train line and they have hazardous materials that they're carrying. So we do take that seriously. I can tell you what we do internally is we have emergency response teams that are prepared. It's, it's a bit challenging because it's on a volunteer basis, but if we can't support that team, we're gonna reach out to our local hazmat teams and we would anyway in that. Um, but there could be somebody that says they were contaminated by something that um, there was a train derailment and there was some gas, plumes of gas around. More than likely though, what we're gonna have is people who come in and maybe they have gasoline or they have minimal exposure, some other kind of chemical, but we have decon showers that we can shower them off and get rid of the contaminants if we have to. So we, that is another one. Um, you guys, like I said, you're all over it, but I can tell you what typically we have, um, our power outages, we talked about that. APS was just here. And we were fortunate that we have generators. Sometimes the generators aren't always working, but we make sure that um, we are prepared just in case. And I know, Julie, you're here from Olive Branch. We had part of our campuses we were responsible for too. So at Boswell, Olive Branch had a power outage. There was like a blip in the power, but it caused some issues. So we did respond over there. And that went well, we recovered. You were without food for a while, unfortunately. But the backup system for that is they can back up with our culinary department in the hospital. We have those plans in place because that's a big piece of what I do too is the planning of what we're gonna do. And lastly, I would say, um, you know, we talked about monsoon activity, extreme heat. We analyze at the hospital level what we are at risk for in the community. And the community does as well, Maricopa County does. You know, I know you guys all do, we call it hazard vulnerability assessment. And we, we um, get our multidisciplinary teams together. We base it on what's happened historically. What are we at risk for, like the, the rail lines? If we've had a lot of power outages, water intrusions, maybe a toilet overflowed, because believe it or not, it happens all the time in the hospital. Someone's flushing what they shouldn't be flushing. And it can, it can cause damage down below. So, you know, it's crazy, but when you get that into like an OR suite or something, this, a sterile area, it, it wreaks a lot of havoc. So these are examples of what we do for training for staff. Um, we're also very fortunate within Banner that we have what we call a corporate emergency operations center. They are, you know, we go from here, we follow the chain of command, the hospital to our corporate EOC, then they may reach out to the county, to the state, you know, it varies depending on what that incident is. But I will say during our COVID response, really our response was driven by our uh, emergency operations center. They managed everything for, for um, Banner and then we put that into practice within Banner. That's just an example of what the corporate EOC would do. Um, another thing that we do is, you know, we have all these community partners in the room. We've had all these speakers. We prepare for community events. Can you think of anything that's happened within the year or two in the community? I mean, I'm talking Maricopa County. We had Super Bowl here a year ago. That was a big deal. And I can tell you over at Thunderbird specifically, we were the first hospital in line if there was um, some kind of a military aircraft that was to land. So we had to prepare, we have a helipad, but it wouldn't support the weight and you know the size of that military aircraft. So we had to make sure we had a helipad on the ground. So, um, but it, it takes, I hear this again in, within Banner, it does take a, truly a village, all these community planners getting together, talking about the what ifs, how are we gonna manage all of this stuff? That is what we do. And I take great pride with Banner that we do it well. We had um, Final Four was just down the road. We had, uh, I, I remember during Super Bowl, Estrella was a little bit closer than Basel, but when I saw, I think it was Rihanna, wasn't it? She was up on that, that platform thing. I'm like, holy cow, don't fall because that would have been bad. <laughs> so it's, it's stuff like that. Waste management we're aware of. You know, our community partners are out there. We, um, a lot of times, we'll have a multi-agency coordination center set up that we will participate in. And, um, but again, it's a community effort of planning and training and then exercises, like I said, active shooter exercises. We may say we've had a couple of power outages. This assessment that we've done, we typically will exercise to the top five risks that we have. And then we um, develop a plan every year. And we have an emergency management committee that goes over all of this. Again, it's multidisciplinary from administration, department directors, all across the house that we look at.
again, it's not what everybody does every day, it's what we do. So make sure people feel comfortable that we do a sufficient amount of trainings, that if we have an exercise and we recognize someone said, hey, I wasn't prepared for this, I didn't know the role from an incident commander down to what we call our section chiefs, then we, we hold additional training. It's our lessons learned after every incident and after every exercise. This is just the cycle of emergency management. We mitigate, we try to look at what we're at risk for, I don't know if it's kind of small. <laughs> then it's preparedness, then it is response, and then it is recovery from that, and then business continuity there is in the middle. It's a continual cycle. So we just try to keep this in mind for everything that we do. Typically, we focus on the mitigation, the preparedness, and response. Recovery is probably what we don't practice enough, although I will say it's extremely important because if, if we were to sustain a, a long-lasting power outage and we couldn't really do patient care anymore in one of our hospitals, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? Where are these patients gonna go? So these are the things that we think about all the time. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail about this because one of the other presenters kind of went into this, but I just wanna make you aware that at our table, the, um, we're sharing with the Olive Branch Senior Center, the takeaway one, two, three, I really am a fan of ready.gov. It's FEMA sponsored. If you get on ready.gov website, it gives you everything you wanna know about making a plan, uh, communicating with your family, with your, your loved ones, you know, in and out of state. We talked about this before. How to build a kit, what to put in your kit, what to think about. We talked about, you know, do we do elder care? Do we have special needs ourselves? Do we have mobility issues? You know, lots of medications, all that kind of stuff. But take one of these or look for it yourself um, on ready.gov. It's great. It's called Take Control in 123. And it will go over everything. And it's especially this particular guide is built for older adults. So I found it, it's very helpful. And just don't forget when you do your plan, especially make sure that you communicate to your family that you have done this plan. Again, you assess your needs. And I like to say that the more you do this, you're really going to be prepared and knowledge is power. Think about all this stuff in advance before the disaster strikes. But communicate, communicate, communicate. I will tell you, even in the hospital world, when after every incident or exercise, we, we evaluate our response. And pretty much every time, it's communication. We didn't get the message fast enough. You talk about an active shooter, boy, that's gonna be a critical message. We do have the capability in Banner to send out a, a message, a broadcast message campus-wide or just to our response team. It just depends on what's going on, who needs to know what. But we can get it done pretty quickly. And through our security team, we can get it even faster and we can announce it overhead. So, um, you know, all things to think about, but communication is huge. Get your plan in place. Utilize a support network. You're not in this alone. You know, work with your family, with your community, with your churches, with, with Banner. If you're looking for some providers for help, you know, reach out to your provider and they, they can assist you with things. Um, and again, it's just fostering connections can make all the difference in navigating life's unexpected challenges. We certainly do have them. And as we get older, I think we tend to have more of them, uh, not necessarily from a disaster point of view, but just any kind of a challenge. If you need to, you know, some help, then, um, you know, be prepared. So again, I'm a, a proponent of sharing the wealth of information from all of our community resources, American Red Cross, again, they were here earlier, great resource to have. They have something called Emergency Preparedness for old, Older Adults, and you can click on their, their website to get that. And then again, this Take Control in 123 is ready.gov, and feel free to reach out to Banner directly for any guidance you may have. But be reassured that we are working behind the scenes. We do partner with everything we do with the community. We are here to ensure your safety, as well as in our hospitals, life safety, patient safety, doctors, physicians, volunteers, visitors, you name it. That is our number one focus at all times is safety. Again, we work behind the scenes, you know, if in case you wonder, hey, I wonder what the hospital does, or I hope you have some kind of a, a takeaway now as to what we do. We do quite a bit. And um, by planning ahead, just make sure that you're ready. So we want you to be prepared and not unprepared. Thank you. That's it. Appreciate your time.